Migration Project. All right, team. Our company has decided to migrate our on-premises infrastructure to Microsoft Azure. This is a major step towards scalability, security, and cost effectiveness. But we need a clear and foolproof migration plan. Where do we start? Great question, Michael. The first step is assessment. We need to analyze our current environment and determine what workloads, applications, and databases need to be migrated. That makes sense. We also need to categorize applications based on their dependencies, right? Exactly. Let's go through the migration and structured steps. Step 1. Assess and discover. First, we need to run an assessment using Azure Migrate. This tool helps identify virtual machines, databases, and applications currently running on-premises. Here's how we do it. 1. Open the Azure Migrate portal. 2. Select Discover and Assess to scan the on-premise workloads. 3. Install the Azure Migrate appliance on the on-premises server to collect data. 4. Wait for the discovery process to complete and analyze the compatibility reports. So this gives us an idea of which applications can be migrated easily and which need modifications. Exactly. Some apps may require re-architecting before moving to the cloud. This tool helps identify virtual machines, databases, and applications currently running on-premises. Step 2. Choose the migration strategy. There are different migration strategies like lift and shift, replatforming, and refactoring. Which one should we go for? Here's how we do it. It depends on the workload. Here's a quick overview of each strategy. Lift and shift, re-hosting. Moving VMs as they are. Quick but not always efficient. 1. Replatforming, making small modifications to improve performance before migration. 2. Refactoring, redesigning applications to be cloud native for better efficiency. And refactoring, redesigning applications to be cloud native for better efficiency. Step 3. Prepare the Azure environment. Now that we know what we're migrating, we need to prepare our Azure environment. 1. Set up an Azure subscription and resource groups to organize resources. 2. Create virtual networks and subnets to match the on-premises network structure. 3. Configure Identity and Access Management IAM, for security. 4. Enable Azure Site Recovery to ensure high availability during migration. For our legacy applications, we may need a mix of these strategies. Let's prioritize critical workloads first. Step 3. Prepare the Azure Environment. Now that we know what we're migrating, we need to prepare our Azure Environment. 1. Set up an Azure subscription and resource groups to organize resources. 2. Create virtual networks and subnets to match the on-premises network structure. 3. Configure Identity and Access Management IAM, for security. And enable Azure Site Recovery to ensure high availability during migration. Got it! So we're basically creating the foundation for our cloud infrastructure. Exactly. Now let's move on to the actual migration. Step 4. Migrate virtual machines. We'll first do a test migration to ensure everything runs smoothly. 1. Go to Azure Migrate. Replicate and select the VMs to migrate. 2. Choose the target subscription, resource group, and region. 3. Configure VM size, disk settings, and network. 4. Click Replicate and wait for the process to complete. 5. Perform a test migration to ensure the system runs without issues. Great. Once we validate the test migration, we can proceed with the full migration, right? Exactly. Once we confirm that everything is functional, we finalize the migration. Step 5. Migrate databases and applications. Databases are critical. We have to migrate them carefully to prevent data loss. We'll use Azure Database Migration Service, DMS. 1. Set up an Azure SQL database as the target. 2. Use Azure DMS to migrate databases without downtime. 3. Test queries to ensure everything works as expected. 4. Validate permissions and security configurations. And for applications? For applications, we use Azure App Service or Azure Kubernetes Service, AKS, to deploy cloud-native solutions. Step 6. Post-migration optimization. Migration is done. Now how do we optimize costs and performance? We need to implement post-migration best practices such as 1. Right-sizing VMs to avoid unnecessary costs. 2. Enabling auto-scaling to handle variable workloads efficiently. 3. Configuring Azure Monitor and Alerts for proactive issue detection. 4. Optimizing security with Azure Defender and encryption. Step 7. Cut over and go live. 
We've validated everything, time to go live. 1. Perform final testing before decommissioning on-premises infrastructure. 2. Update DNS settings to point traffic to the new Azure environment. 3. Train the IT team and end users for the new system. 4. Monitor and troubleshoot post-migration issues. This was a massive success. Great work, team. Thanks, Michael. Now let's make sure everything runs smoothly in the long run. This was a fantastic learning experience. Migration isn't just about moving data, it's about making it more efficient and future ready. We'll first do a test migration to ensure everything runs smoothly. Go to Azure Migrate, then Replicate. Absolutely. And for anyone watching, if you're planning a migration, follow these steps carefully. Also, we have a few tricky questions for you. Let's see how well you understood the process. Questions for viewers. Click Replicate and wait for the process to complete. What is the primary advantage of using Azure Migrate for assessments? Which migration strategy is best for legacy applications? What are two post-migration steps to ensure system stability? If you found this helpful, hit the like button. Subscribe for more Azure learning adventures. See you in the next episode of our Azure Cloud Adventure.